Hey guys, Wolver Monkey here. Uh, today, as the title suggests, we're going to be reviewing some 10 millimeter uh, World War II miniatures from Pendragon. Um, I've never ordered from them before, so this was the first time. Uh, 10 millimeter. I do have some 10 millimeter stuff for the those of you that remember the War Master fantasy game from Games Workshop. I have some undead stuff from them and some elves. Um, it's first time ordering. Um, historical miniatures, if you will. So I do have some 15 mil World War II stuff that I was planning on hoping to use, but I don't think it's going to happen. So I went with 10 mil. Um, I'm going to review these, and the reason you're probably going, well, why did you get 10 mil World War II stuff if you don't really do historical games? I was going to use them, or am going to use them, with this, One Hour War Games by Neil Thomas. Um, very cool set of rules, super simple games. They do actually play in an hour or less. Um, it covers from Ancients all the way up to World War II. So my idea was to do some 10 mil World War II. Um, it, it does any scale really. Um, obviously the, in the picture they have some 28s sitting here. Um, I'm going to do 10s. You, uh, you don't remove figures from bases it's simply they have x amount of everybody has 15 life points so use a die or whatever to keep track of their life points once that unit has been um taking 15 hits you remove it from the table okay so you can multi-base it's fine so that's kind of why i went with 10 mil plus it'll play in a small area like a two by two or um they suggest a three by three or a four by four obviously if you're using 28 mil miniatures you'd want more space uh, there are a few video review a uh, few vi um, bat reps of this on YouTube very few actually which I'm surprised because it is actually a very simple fast game uh, rule set I've played one game so far by myself uh, well my cat would join me and I posted pictures on my Instagram um, but I used um, Civil War flats because I really wanted to give this a try and I didn't, I don't have any miniatures ready for this yet. Um, so I went on War Game Vault and looked at flats and found a nice set of Civil War guys for, I think they were like $2.50. Printed them out, mounted them on um, poster board, or not poster board, foam board, foam core. Mounted them on that, and I played a game uh, using the Civil War miniatures, uh, flats. And it did. I, I think it was supposed to last eight turns. I think it lasted four uh, for that particular scenario. The one cool thing about this is, um, just now see it's, the video is turning into a review of this instead of a review of these, um, as you will. Um, but it does cover all the areas throughout history. Um, one of the coolest things I think about this, though, is the probably more than half of the book like maybe two-thirds of the book are scenarios just a shit ton of scenarios and each scenario will tell you army sizes composition how many units you get any special rules for um, victory conditions where they got the idea for the scenario how to set up your table um, so my idea was to do two different armies for this um, not Civil War. I just grabbed those real quick because they were cheap and easy and I wanted to try the rules before I committed to spending some real money. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be doing World War II and the other one I'm going to do is Medieval, but I was going to be using some fantasy miniatures for that. Little, um, I started building a 6 mil army, so I might end up doing using the 6 mil guys. Um, Undead and um, the other army I have is Ratmen. So I might be doing those, probably doing those, unless I get some more of my 10 mil elves and undead guys painted up. Um, you only need four types of troops for all the all the scenarios, all the armies in this book only have four types of troops. So you don't need to build a huge army. It's not like 40k. Um, and there's you roll a d6 and it will tell you for that scenario what troops you get. Um, you might have three infantry, uh, one tank, one mortar, and one um, anti-aircraft gun, say for World War II as an example. 
your opponent might roll his d6 and he's going to get four infantry, two mortars, one tank and an anti-aircraft, uh, anti-tank gun. So you don't know, every time you play it, you're going to roll that d6, so your troop selections will be different every time. Um, and that's true of any, any of the periods you pick in this game. Um, you roll on a table and it'll, it'll tell you what troop types. And it'll tell you, there are different tables if you're running um, six units, three, three, four, or six units. Uh, the scenario will tell you how many troops you get, how many troop units you get. And then you roll on the appropriate table and see what you get to work with. Which I think is cool because it adds some... Um, challenge to it, you know? Like, oh, if I know I'm playing this scenario, I'm going to take more armor or more anti-armor or faster troops to seize objectives, or whatever your situation might be. Um, this one, you know, you pick the scenario, then you roll to see what you get to work with, and then you got to make it work with what you have, which is pretty realistic coming from a military background. So lots of times you work with what you have and do the best you can with what you got, you know? So, enough about the rule set. Let's see these amazing miniatures. Now, I did already actually open this. Uh, it's been a minute since I had a chance to do a video. So, but anyway, we're going to check them out. So, they come in this cool little tiny box. Look how tiny these boxes are. I only get these kind of boxes when I order shit from England. Uh, Alternative Army sends me boxes like this all the time. Little boxes full of stuff. Because I get stuff from Alternative Armies. Um, anyway, first time with Pendraken. My experiences so far. Not pleasant. When I ordered it, um, after I placed my order, the little blurb popped up on the screen says, Oh, your order will be processed in two to three business days and shipped out in like within, uh, I think, seven business days or anyway, it's supposed to be processed pretty quickly. It wasn't. Um, I placed my order. And the next email I got from them saying that they actually shipped my order was 20 days later. Yeah, not two to three business days. This was 20 days later before they actually shipped what I ordered. And I want to say, I don't know if it's just something going on with the mail right now. Uh, usually stuff from England, I can get it within two weeks. This took like a month at least for it to show up. So that, that kind of sucked. Now, I don't know if that's Pendrake and Standard, or it's just how shit happened at the time that I ordered. I don't know. Uh, if I order more stuff from them, I will f let you know. So, on to, the, we're on to the good part. Where's the toys? So right off the get-go, you guys see tanks on top. So for World War II, you're allowed to have up to two tanks. So I ordered what I, what I needed to play this game. So each, each army has two tanks, two mortars, two anti-tank, and enough infantry to make four squads. So for tanks, I got some German Panzer III's. You can see them here, hopefully. That's in focus. I'm looking through the screen on my camera, and I can't really tell if it's in focus. Uh, super easy kits. It's a turret. It's a chassis. And the tracks just glue onto the side of the chassis here. That's a 10 mil Panzer III. Um, does it say what it is? What model? No, it doesn't say what model Panzer III. Again, I'm not like a super history buff. But Panzer III is for the Germans. Um, for the Americans, we have the Venerable Shermans. And again, I don't remember which version of a Sherman this is. But same deal. You got the whole chassis, the tank treads glue onto the side, and... If I can get it out of there, there you go, there's a turret. Maybe if I took them out of the bag, you guys might enjoy it a little better, huh? Probably catching a lot of glare off my lights. Okay. Move things around a little bit. There we go. So here's the hole. It's a pretty well detailed for 10 mil, I must say. I, these actually are bigger than I thought they would be. Um, I have 6 mil stuff and I have 15 mil stuff, so these are actually a little bit bigger than I thought they would be. They're very well detailed, I think. Let's see, that is this side. So, obviously they need to be cleaned up and trimmed and maybe a little bit of filing going on. But, there is your 10 millimeter Sherman. Clean that out of the way. 
you know, open up them Panzer threes, huh? Um, it just the the um, one hour war games. It just says tank. It does not specify what kind of tank. You know, it doesn't say what if you're late, mid, or early war. It just says tank. So you could have got anything. I just picked Panzer threes and obviously Shermans. Again. Really nice detail. Hopefully that comes in. There you go. And the turrets too. Really nicely detailed. So it just slots in and again the uh let's see if I can find the right side here. There we go. Those just glue in like that. Give an idea of. So they're still, I said, they're pretty good size, bigger than I thought they would be. Very, very well detailed. Uh, troop wise, this is the German mortar team. Uh, luckily, you get two mortar teams. <laughs> so it worked out perfect because that's what I need two mortar teams. So here is the uh, actual mortar. And then as far as the troops go, here is a 10 millimeter German. Looks like a loader. Looks like he's got a shell in his hand. Um, so 10 mil is pretty small, which is, but I'm cool with that. I expect, here is a 15 millimeter guy from Ground Zero Games. Give you guys an idea. There's some 6 mil guys. And there's a 10 mil guy with them. Give you guys an idea. Oh yeah, we can do the tanks too, huh? So we got our 10 mil Panzer and a 6 mil. So quite a big difference there. Um, so you get enough guys here for, there it is. Enough guys here for two mortar teams. Oh, you actually get three mortar teams. Sweet. I only need two, though. So I'll have an extra mortar team. And the Americans are, they're all packaged exactly the same way. Put this back in their little baggies. Just so I don't have them all mixed up when I open up the other ones. Okay. Put the camera back down. Um, what do we got here? These are German riflemen with, so you guys can see that well enough. They have um, machine guns and I also got a pack of German riflemen oddly enough with rifles. So I'll grab one of those guys, you guys can check them out. Um, you get 10 guys in a pack. I don't remember. I've had these for about a month at least, so I don't remember. There's a rifleman. I don't remember um, how much I paid for them. I know they're fairly inexpensive, actually. But you get 10 infantry in each pack. I said I need to make uh, four squads. So I'm just going to... Um, they give you a suggested base size, which is actually fairly large. Um... But you can use any base size, so really. So I'm going to put these on 40 by 20 mil bases, five guys to a base. Maybe mix them up a little bit. So that way I'll have uh, four squads of German infantry. And lastly for the Germans, we have two anti-tank guns. Now I think, if I remember right, when I ordered these, I think I got pack 40s. I think. This one you actually do get two. Um, but I'm bound to see. It looks like it goes this way. And yes, they are bent to shit because they come in a little plastic bag and not a hard blister. So once you straighten it out ish, then you glue that to there. Let's see if I can get this stuff. So there's your 10 millimeter pack 40. And you do get a crew. Um, you get a 10 mil crew for these. Uh, is that focusing? I can't really tell on my little screen here. 
But that's what you get. Two crews, two pack 40s, two crews. So that's my two anti-tank guns for the Germans. Um, I have to look up some images so I can try and get the uniforms somewhat close to reality. I mean, I know they're not just gray, just like the Americans aren't just green, right? So the American guys, uh, we got, again, same thing. It's two mortar teams, or one, two, yep, three. Three mortar teams, I only need two. Um, this is the American anti-tank guns. I don't remember this at all, because I, I don't really know the American artillery. So that was, as a kid, I built more German stuff than anything else. But these are the American anti-tank guns. I'm guessing they go like this. Again, I'll have to look up. See what kind of pictures I can find. And get your American crew, little little dude pointing to where you gotta blow up. Um infantry for the Americans, it just said riflemen. So I just think I, I think I got two packs of the exact same thing. And look by the look of it I did because they just combined all 20 miniatures into one bag. So even the um, anti-tank and mortar mortar uh, crews, I'm gonna be mounting on um, either the 40 by 20s or I might put these guys on round bases. I think they look cooler. The mortar teams and the anti-tank guns, I think they would look cooler on round bases. And I might even do the other ones that way too. Now that I think about it, I might just do the infantry on round bases. But here's 20 American riflemen. We'll dig a couple of them out. I see you guys can check them out. Detail on these is pretty nice. I mean, um, maybe hard to see on cam. But uh, overall, the detail is pretty good. I mean, you can actually... Hopefully you guys can see that. In the back of the guy, it actually has um, little satchels and um, like ammo and sleeping bag, that kind of stuff. I think the Germans even have like, you can see that little can on the back of the Germans for their gas mask. So pretty nice detail overall um, on the miniatures. Should be pretty fun to paint. Uh, I know a lot of people say, oh, people that I work with or that know about my hobby because of me. And they're like, you know, you show them something tiny like this, like, oh my God, how do you paint that? Um, you know, it, it, you guys that play minis, you know, this, to me anyway, as far as I'm concerned, the smaller you go, the easier it is to paint um, because there's less detail, right? You can't see as much detail, so you don't need to paint as much detail. It's not like you have a 30 mil guy where you can have to paint his eyes and you can paint beard stubble and all that. I have seen some 15, 15 millimeter models before, Germans, for uh, Flames of War, where they actually did paint like beard stubble and it was crazy. They're absolutely beautiful miniatures. Um, I think somebody on eBay painted them up and were selling them for some outlandishly high price. It was such a small group of miniatures, though. But that is Pendraken 10 millimeter World War II. And that is, again, for the one-hour war games. Um, whenever I get these painted up,